in every theater the north american b-25 mitchell medium bomber demonstrated its versatility as a combat vehicle in less than four months following the catastrophic attack on pearl harbor america launched one of the most audacious and memorable bomber raids of world war ii against japan under the command of lieutenant colonel james h early on saturday april eighteenth nineteen forty two sixteen north american b twenty five mitchell bombers piloted by jimmy doolittle and loaded with extra fuel five hundred pound bombs and incendiary clusters lumbered five hundred feet along the wooden flight deck of the nineteen thousand nine hundred ton yorktown class aircraft carrier u s hornet c v eight they took off into a stiff wind they flew eight hundred miles eastward to attack military objectives in the tokyo nagoya cove and yokohama regions as they ascended into a soggy rainy sky bombers were launched from a carrier for the first and only time and when they arrived at their targets they caught every one off guard although they only caused modest material damage the raid had a significant psychological effect the americans had a much needed boost of morale following a string of setbacks in the far east while the shocked japanese were compelled to advance their intended attack on midway atoll preventing further carrier attacks against their nation the valiant doolittle received the medal of honor and his historic raid the nation's first wartime victory brought immediate notoriety for the north american b twenty five mitchell one of the war's most extensively deployed and potent twin-engine bombers in the meantime the plump friendly doolittle a record-breaking peacetime air racer rose to national hero status and eventually led the u s northwest african strategic air force twelfth and fifteenth air forces and eighth air force see world war ii history magazine to learn all about the accomplishments of the mighty eighth the b twenty five mitchell was dubbed after brig gen william billy mitchell the ebullient air power visionary who demonstrated in nineteen twenty one and nineteen twenty three that aircraft could bring down battleships mitchell's reputation as a ground attack bomber and ship killer was unmatched from the mediterranean to the pacific from burma to normandy the tough and adaptable b twenty five saw action on nearly every allied front it was widely considered the most successful twin-engine combat aircraft of world war ii the plane was conceptualized prior to the start of the nineteen thirty nine to nineteen forty five conflict an attack bomber with two engines was proposed by the army air corps and north american aviation incorporated created a prototype known as n a forty to one in response james h the company's genius president and principal designer was the driving factor behind the design dutch kindelberger was a west virginian who flew in world war i he was also in charge of the fabled p fifty one mustang fighter which is thought to have been the finest fighter aircraft of the war the prototype for the b twenty five mitchell bomber had a tricycle landing gear a shoulder wing design and a one thousand two hundred pound bomb load it was propelled by two one thousand one hundred horsepower pratt and whitney engines the nose dorsal and ventral machine guns all thirty caliber made up its armament in january nineteen thirty nine test pilot paul balfour made the prototype's first flight which was constructed in the company's Inglewood, California plant. The aircraft was renamed NA-42 and sent to Wright Field in Ohio in March 1939 for USAAC assessment. The 1,300-horsepower Wright Cyclones quickly replaced the original engines. The Air Corps was impressed with the NA-42 design, despite the fact that the prototype crashed two weeks later due to pilot mistake some modifications were required such as an increase in the bomb capacity and weaponry when the european war broke out in september nineteen thirty nine north america was contracted to carry out development under the basic design n a sixty two an immediate deal for one hundred and eighty four bombers now known as b twenty five s was placed numerous enhancements were implemented the engines were changed to one thousand 
700 horsepower right cyclone radials. The wing was moved to a mid position, operational weights and the bomb load were increased, and a tail gun position was added. Later additions included crew protection armor plating and self-sealing fuel tanks. The solution to the plane's stability issues was to add a gull wing. Constructing a B-25 Mitchell was a difficult and drawn-out process. It was half the size of a consolidated B-24 Liberator heavy bomber, and not including the 150,000 rivets holding it together. It included 165,000 individual parts. The Mitchell's average cost by 1944 was $142,194, about $50,000 less than that of the Martin B-26 Marauder, which was its replacement. The B-25, which saw numerous more modifications, had a crew of four to six people, weighed 35,000 pounds, was 53 feet in length, 68 feet in width, and was equipped with a 3,000 pound bomb load. Its service ceiling was 24,200 feet. Its top speed was 272 miles per hour at 13,000 feet, and its range was 1,350 miles. Despite receiving 9,816 B-25s, from North Americans Englewood and Kansas City, Kansas, plants in total. The U.S. Army Air Forces never had more than 2,700 of the aircraft on hand at any given time throughout World War II due to the quantity delivered to other American and Allied air units. On August 19, 1940, the B-25 Mitchell Bomber's first production variant underwent a test flight. Forty more upgraded B-25 as were subsequently constructed. Operating out of McCord Field in Washington, this was the first Mitchell type to see operational use with the 17th Medium Bombardment Group. The aircraft conducted anti-submarine patrols and on Christmas Eve 1941, they successfully sank a Japanese submarine off the coast of Puget Sound in the United States, the West Coast. In 1942, additional Mitchells were sent and quickly demonstrated their value to American and Allied aviation formations. Some B-25V variants were pressed into duty with the U.S. military, while others were deployed as reinforcements to Australia, where they operated with the 13th and 19th squadrons of the 3rd Bombardment Group. The U.S. Navy, China, the Soviet Air Force, the British Royal Air Force, the Dutch, Brazil, and the Marine Corps. With the arrival of the B-25, the Beleaguered Raif was able to replace its NO. Two groups Bristol Blenheims, Douglas, A-20 Bostons, and Lockheed Venturas used for daytime operations over Northwest Europe. Despite the Mitchell's lack of assignment to the U.S., 71 of aircraft were designated for seven RAF squadrons of the 8th Air Force in England. Much as American airmen cherished the strong, dependable B-25, so did RAF crews. With American, British, Australian, Canadian, Dutch, Chinese, Polish, and Soviet crews, an increasing number of Mitchells participated in nearly every war area as the Allies went on the offensive in 1942 and 1943. They supported amphibious assaults, bombed and strafed ground targets, destroyed enemy shipping, and served as transporters, photo reconnaissance, and training aircraft. The Agile B-25 was one of the most lethal and efficient weapons in the Allied aerial arsenal, no matter where it was used. It proved to be almost indispensable, bristling with a dozen 50 caliber machine guns and carrying 3,000 pounds of bombs or eight 5-inch rockets. Its firepower meant that it didn't need a fighter escort. A few B-25s were converted into gunships in order to target enemy ground targets or shipping. Eight 50 caliber machine guns are crammed into the plane's nose and one of them is being serviced by a ground crew member in this picture. The B-25 had numerous changes as the war went on, mostly to its weaponry. Some even had 75 millimeters field guns added in addition to glide torpedoes and cannons. 
Although the gun proved useful in destroying enemy submarines and ground targets, machine guns eventually took its place. Ultimately, Mitchells were equipped with nearly every possible configuration of weapons and bombs that their crews and pilots could think of. The USAF's 341st Bomb Group discovered that the B-25s were so tough that they could operate from improvised grass and dirt airstrips, range far behind Japanese lines, and target supply dumps at low level in the China-Burma-India theater. Mitchells from the 345th Bomb Group were able to operate at a reasonably long range, strike Japanese ships at wave cap altitude, and withstand direct hits from small arms fire in the Pacific. Theater. B-25s, on the other hand, were frequently deployed in the Mediterranean theater while donning yellowish desert camouflage. U.S. 12th Bombardment Group Mitchells joined Major Gen Lewis H. Raritan's Middle East Air Force, later known as the 9th Air Force, at Fayed, northern Egypt, in July 1942. B-25s helped prepare the way for Operation Torch, the three-pronged invasion of North Africa in November, by providing assistance to British 8th Army forces at Alam Halfa and during the historic Battle of El Alamein on October 23, 1942, the first significant Allied victory of the war. Then came some of the hardest fighting of the war for the workhorse medium bombers as they bombed and strafed targets. The British and American Mitchells launched devastating daytime attacks on German and Italian troop concentrations, convoys, panzer columns, airfields, bridges, marshalling yards, and the port areas of Sfax, Seuss, Tunis, La Goulette, and Bazert while Raif Vickers Wellington bombers maintained the pressure at night and A-20s staged their renowned Boston Tea Parties. Over the Luftwaffe, the Allied air groups in North Africa achieved near total dominance. Mitchells joined the fighting from bases in Sardinia and Corsica as the Mediterranean conflict moved to Sicily and Italy in May 1943 after the Allies defeated the German Africa Corps and its Italian allies. Joseph Heller, a bombardier in a USAAF B-25 crew, wrote a satirical novel Catch-22 about his experiences. In 1955, the bestseller was released. Both before and after the British 8th and American forces invaded mainland Italy, 5th Army's Allied B-25 Mitchell squadrons conducted multiple raids to ease adamant German resistance. 66 Mitchells participated in an attack on Rome's main marshalling yards on August 13, 1943, together with Boeing B-17 Flying Fortresses, B-26, and Lockheed P-38 Lightning Fighters. For five days, they halted travel to Naples. A few months later, following numerous more combat flights, 77 Mitchells were back in action on March 15, 1944, when a sizable contingent of Allied bombers struck the enemy-held monastery at Monte Cassino, the scene of some of the fiercest fighting on the Italian front. Bombs were dropped by 77 B-25s, 164 B-24s, 114 B-17s, and 105 B-26s. An eight-hour artillery barrage then ensued. In the campaign across the Mediterranean, the assault was unprecedented. While the remaining German 1st Parachute Division defenders held their post and opened heavy fire on the advancing Allied forces, the other half of the division suffered fatalities or injuries. May 11, 1944 saw U.S. B-25s departing. Starting in central Italy, the 12th Air Force launched Operation Strangle, bombing and strafing enemy supply lanes along the long and dangerous festive line. The next July 4, 5th and 8th Armies triumphantly liberated Rome as a result of the aerial offensive. As with other fronts, the Allied naval and ground onslaught in the Pacific was gaining momentum, and the Mitchells, as strafers, bombers, and skip bombers, were performing admirably. A Japanese convoy was nearly destroyed by B-25s carrying 500-pound bombs and 10 forward-firing machine guns 
without any casualties among them during the historic battle of the bismarck sea in march 1943 706 mitchell's pb days based on army versions were purchased by the u s navy and transferred to the marine corps for use in the pacific theater with the exception of a small number that were used for training purposes of the sixteen b twenty five squadrons in the marine corps saw combat beginning in march nineteen forty four at stirling island subsequent actions such as the landings of sagpan in june nineteen forty four and Iwo Jima in February 1945, made excellent use of the PBAs. The Marines lost 19 B-25s in non-combat accidents and 26 in battle. In April 1945, off the coast of China, a B-25 Mitchell medium bomber successfully completes a skip bombing mission against a Japanese coastal defense vessel. The Mitchell, also known as Billy's Bomber and the Sweetheart of the Services, was adored by its crews and pilots for its devastating damage to enemy objectives while maintaining its own survival a pilot with the three hundred and forty first bomb group stationed in india and the pacific lieutenant david hayward observed it is amazing how much punishment the b twenty fives could take on the airplane there weren't many weak points beneath our chairs were armor plates the fuel tanks sealed themselves we gained security for the speed we gave up. Everyone on the crew, with the exception of the people crammed into their little belly gun turrets, applauded the agile and well-armored planes. The gunner, on his knees, had to use a dual hand control to see through a periscope of lenses and mirrors. For most operators, the jumbled mechanism rendered them too lightheaded to fire. According to one mission commander, the bottom turret was very complicated and worked backwards to what was normal mastering it would have required more time than we had before he could learn to fire this device a man could learn to play the violin well enough to perform at carnegie hall apart from that its crews and pilots gave the mitchell excellent grades despite its shortcomings as a commander of the second plane in the doolittle raid Twenty-four-year-old Lieutenant Travis Hoover of Melrose, New Mexico, put it, The B-25 was a really superior airplane, right on the cutting edge of technology for medium bombardment. We kind of got attached to it. Commander of the seventh plane in the group, Lieutenant Ted W. Lawson, a twenty-four-year-old Fresno, California resident, concurred, saying, You just had to stand there and look at them and breathe heavily. It's a magnificent ship, swift, powerful, and rife with combat. It is far more than just a lifeless mass of material that has been carefully geared, connected, and riveted into a small, tightly fitting box. It's a decent, reliable friend. Following the renowned raid, Lawson had to have one of his legs amputated. In 1943, he released the best-selling biography, 30 Seconds Over Tokyo. Hollywood naturally saw Lawson's book as a hot commodity and a way to improve morale across the country. The Metro-Goldwyn-Mayer Studios began work on a film featuring Colonel Doolittle, despite the latter's insistence on delaying the production of the picture until after the war. Working together with director Mervyn Leroy and producer Sam Zimbalist, writer Dalton Trumbo adapted the book for the cinema. Filming took place in 1943 and 1944. Despite their meager resources, the Army Air Forces lent MGM 12 B-25s along with their crews. It was an amazing job for a production during World War II. A Hollywood soundstage was used to mimic the Hornet flight deck, and an oil refinery fire in East Oakland, California was used to simulate the bombing of Tokyo. However, a large number of shots were recorded on location at Eglin Field, which is close to Pensacola, Florida, where the Doolittle Raiders had been training for a month. Van Johnson played Lawson in his breakthrough role. Spencer Tracy played Doolittle, while Robert Walker, Robert Mitchum, and Phyllis Thaxter made up the supporting cast. In September 1944, the movie had its world debut in Glendale, California. Tentative and realistic, 30 seconds over Tokyo became an MGM smash. 
and an audience favorite for a long time. It also received an Academy Award for Visual Effects and was nominated for a Photography Award. During the war years, it was among the best Hollywood service pictures that came out. Concerned that the Mitchell might not withstand heavy German anti-aircraft fire, American light bomber groups were outfitted with the B-26 Marauder and A-20 Havoc as the Allied aerial onslaught grew in the European theater. Despite this, B-25 saw a great deal of combat, beginning with a raid on an oil refinery in Ghent, Belgium, on January 22, 1943, by 12 aircraft from the RAF's No. 98 and 180 squadrons. The Mitchells flew numerous low-level missions against enemy transports, communications, and radar centers in France, along with Havocs, Marauders, de Havilland Mosquito Fighter Bombers, and rocket-firing Hawker Typhoons. This helped to weaken German defenses prior to and during the historic Allied invasion on June 6, 1944. On the morning of D-Day itself, our Mitchell squadrons attacked with great accuracy gun positions directly threatening the approach of the Great Armada to the Normandy beachhead, stated Air Vice Marshal Sir Basil E. Embry, commander of the RAF's 2nd Tactical Air Force's No. 2 Group. Our Boston's A-20s, flying at sea level, laid the smoke screen over the invasion craft. RAF Mitchell units in England were all part of the formidable 2nd Tactical Air Force, which used B-25 Mitchell bombers in five plane subformations during daytime missions. The formidable defensive cover offered by the fearsome firepower of 13 50 caliber machine guns was achieved in this manner. Mitchells and Mosquitoes were also often used in tandem for nighttime attacks, with the former serving as target illuminators. The Mitchells then backed Canadian and British soldiers during the bloodiest fighting of the Normandy campaign, a costly month-long battle to seize the strategically important city of Cannes. The bombers not only destroyed German V-1 and V-2 rocket sites, but also concentrated troops, tank formations, supply dumps, rail links, and bridges. As the British, American, and Canadian armies fought their way eastward toward the River Rhine and into Germany, they performed a heroic duty in their close quarters tactical role almost every day. On May 2, 1945, 47 aircraft from the RAF snow. Two group destroyed marshalling yards at Itcho and Schleswig-Holstein, marking the end of the European War for B-25, the 78th and 79th stories of the Empire State Building in New York sustained significant damage when a B-25 crashed into it in July 1945. The reliable medium bombers continued to serve until the summer of 1945, when the Pacific War came to a conclusion but one of them gained national news. LT Colonel William F. Smith of Bedford, Massachusetts, took off in his B-25 early on July 28, 1945, and went south toward Newark, New Jersey. Along for the ride were a young sailor who was hitching a ride home to New Jersey and his co-pilot. Smith got lost in the cloud and fog and was alerted by the control tower at LaGuardia Field in New York, to the severely low visibility in the metropolitan area. The bombers struck the Empire State edifice, the highest structure in the world, at 9.40 in the morning, ripping an 18 by 20 foot crater between the 78th and 79th floors. The edifice was located in Midtown Manhattan. One engine tore through seven walls, another smashed into the elevator shaft and a portion of the fuselage buried itself in the north facade of the tower. Historian John Toranek said the building shuddered, realigned itself, and settled. High-octane fuel leaked from the Mitchell's burst tanks and doused the structure after there was an explosion. Part of the plane's wing collapsed onto Madison Avenue, while other sections dumped rain over a five-block radius. Apart from the three guys in the jet, only 10 people died and 25 were injured despite the significant damage. It was a far greater calamity if it hadn't happened early on a Saturday morning. 
approximately 15,000 employees and 35,000 tourists may have been present in the facility on a typical workday. When the elevator's wires were severed and her car fell 80 stories into the building's subbasement, the female operator miraculously escaped. Mitchell deliveries ceased in August 1945. However, many of the aircraft were still in service following the Allied triumph. A number of them were converted into pilot trainers by the U.S. Air Force, and others were disassembled to become transports. Postwar users of B-25s were the Soviet Union, Brazil, Argentina, Bolivia, Chile, Colombia, Cuba, Dominica, Mexico, Peru, Uruguay, Venezuela, and Indonesia, in addition to Canada, Australia, and a few minor air forces. Throughout the post-war conflict that culminated in the communist toppling of Chiang Kai-shek's administration, Mitchell's provided to the Chinese Air Force remained an operational duty.